Simon, this is an interesting one. Can you tell me what we're trying to demonstrate here on this uh, Hardinge Bridgeport machine with your Hypermill software? Certainly. Um, it's a combination of using barrel type, conical barrel type tools um, and some of the max machining finishing cycles from Hypermill. We're hearing lots about max machining from you guys at the moment. I know it's very popular. But what, what are we actually showing here in this, in this pocket? Um, well, this particular cavity, it's quite deep and it's got very small radiuses in the corners. So typically, to avoid collision with the tool holder itself, we'd have to knock the, the, uh, the head over at an angle and then scan down it using typically a ball nose tool. Whereas what we're showing here is a combination of, of, of using barrel tools and max machining cycles, tip the head over, use the barrel uh, body of the, um, of, of the cutting tool, flicking the head over some more, to get the actual ball part of the barrel tool to pick out the corners. So it's all done in one, in one step. So one tool solely for the whole operation? One tool for the whole operation. Each face on this pocket as well, you've gone down at different depths. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was really just to give uh, a demonstration of the type of surface finish you can achieve uh, using these barrel tools. Um, so on, on this face, for example, we went down at uh, eight millimeter step down. Um, which is, could be quite acceptable for certain air structure parts, for example. Then we chose a step down of six millimeters here, um, four millimeters on this face, and then finally two millimeters on this face. So, and that's just to give engineers the example of what the surface finish would be like by going down on those depths of cut. Correct, correct. If the surface finish wasn't important, even an eight millimeter step down, we can reduce cycle times up to 90%. Well, this is, was going to be where I was going next because we do talk a lot about this 90% value yeah. of saving. Yeah. And this is the type of operation that we're talking about where you can achieve that because you're doing it in one tool in one hit. Exactly right, Paul, yeah. Um, even, even this face here, if you, if you rub your, your finger down that wall, it's an extremely good finish. And that's a two millimeter step down. To achieve that type of of, of, of finish with a ball nose tool, which you'd use typically all traditionally. Now, you know, you'd have to step down at like 0.1 of a millimetre. Let, let's go on to this port here. Um, just tell me what, what else we're doing here on the machine. Uh, yeah, so again, similar to the, the blade cycles that you, you, you saw uh, on the Fanuc Robodrill machine, um, we got dedicated uh, cycles within Hypermill for porting. So extremely easy, pick the face, choose the tool, away you go. This particular operation was done with a lollipop type tool uh, and I think Mike Stobart from, from Quick Grind who's our partner um, supplying the tools for this event um, we'll talk more about this in a, in a moment. So the, is, it, is the porting function something that you'd find difficult to do without cam software? It would be extremely difficult to do without cam software but not only that um, you know the cam software has to have the dedicated porting cycles to make programming easier again it's a it's a two-minute process to calculate, to program and calculate the tool path. How many companies do you believe are, are machining ports in parts, and what sort of industries would they be in? Uh, well, the obvious one is, is automotive, but there's many, many other areas where you can use the porting cycles. Many different industries. It's it, you know, it's not just for the auto, uh, the motorsport industry, and the uh, automotive industry. You can use that cycle in many, many different other situations. I guess what we're doing here is showing. What, what you can achieve by using Hypermill software on those more sort of difficult, complex type operations, but also the cycle time reductions that you can achieve. Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. You know, the more difficult the part, the more excited we become. Mike, quick grind carbide tooling. You're working closely with Open Mind and their Hypermill software to get yep. the best results in these machining processes we're looking at here today. Yep. Just tell us about this carbide tool, what it is and what it does. Look, well, this tool is uh, really fits between an end mill and a ball nose. So if you're going to produce a, a surface like this, your choices are an end mill or a ball nose. If you want a good surface finish, you're going to have to use a ball nose. So a ball nose, say, for example, you might have a, a, a 10 mil diameter ball nose with a 0.2 step down. There's no other alternative you can use at the moment. So what we do, we take a segment of a circle to produce the, the flutes on the tool. We also have a radius on the end tool. So you've got basically two tools in one. So with the greater uh, ability to have a step down of maybe four five mil depending on the features that you're trying to do then your reduction in cycle time is huge maybe up to 90 percent 
Are you manufacturing these tools here in the UK? Yeah, absolutely. Quick Run is a company based in, in Chicksbury. We've been going 50 years. We develop tools for people's needs. We don't say to you, here's a catalogue, this is what you have to buy. We ask you what you want and how to develop it. And what we do with OpenMind is, is obviously they come to us, this is the feature, this is what we want to do, can you make a tool to do it? And generally we can. What about tool wear on this, Mike? How, how does that fare? It's, it's absolutely fantastic, yeah. I mean, you, it's a finishing tool. And the, one of the most important thing we have is that we love to have the tools back to remanufacture. Remanufacture isn't just a, a, a fancy name for regrind. There's, there's five different processes we use to, to take the tool back to new. And it's just something we do worldwide. We supply 32 different countries around the world. And we, they send their tools back to us for remanufacture. So it's something we're very, very keen on. And, and, and I get all this, and I do, I do see, and I've witnessed some massive cycle time savings. Yeah. I think what, what I'd like to try and get across here is that engineers do like to buy tools from uh, sort of standard products yeah. because they can sometimes be uh, less in price, they, they, they cost less, um, and they don't like to invest in things that might cost them more money without knowing that they're going to get a result. So is this going to cost them more money as an outlay to start with? Well, you know, tell no. us about that. No, won't. no. To us, it's, it's just a tool, we make it. It's not a special. You want a tool, we make the tool to, to our design, but to, to machine your features. So for us, it's not any more expensive. It's actually more expensive if you don't actually use a tool for the job. You know, there will always be the need for standard tooling. We have a standard tooling range, that's fine. They're a quick go-to tool, but ideally, you know, we, we'll produce a tool, whether it's an end mill with a shorter flute length, different rads, whatever it is, different job to, to suit the job and it's not that much more expensive. Okay, so that being the case, you must be selling a lot of these, are you? We're, we're, this is a new development. So this one here is, and damn things last too long. But <laughs> no, it's working very, very well. It's, it's, we have to get people to understand the concept. It's a no-brainer when you see it, but then it's, it's putting the features into, into your own um, machine shop. We have thousands of people watching our videos, so they're gonna watch this. What sort of engineer do they need to be? What sort of machine shop do they need to have? And what sort of parts do they need to be making for your products to work for them? What you have to look at there, you need simultaneous five axis machining, uh, you need open mine, hyper mill, hyper max software to use the barrel tool. So if you've got that and you want to save a lot of money, that's what we'll do for you. What about the applications themselves if they haven't got any of those? What do they need to, what parts do they need to be going and seeing in their machine shop today and going, actually, that combination of, uh, of products I need, what sort of parts do they need to be making? If you look at, rather than the part, think of what you're doing with it. If you're scanning with ball noses, finishing takes forever. So if you're looking at reducing cycle time on your ball nose scanning, then you need to look at barrel tool.